Hey everybody, thank you for having me. This is awesome. This is the second time I've done this talk, so if I make a mistake, uh, just point it out. <laughs> um, thank you for coming to this talk on lights, camera action, GitHub actions, um, as this relates to Java projects. And keep that in mind, it's, it's really important. Um, so, just imagine uh, you work for a fictional company, and uh, um, has anybody used GitHub Actions before, or, or has never heard of it? Anybody never heard of it? Okay, cool, great. This is uh, a basic tutorial, so yeah, I'll get you up to speed. So um, again, imagine you work for a fi fictional company, uh, you know, called E Corp, and uh, the security officer or someone on the software team says, "Hey, there's a vulnerability um, in the Java release, the JDK." So, for instance, um, uh, they they're called CVEs or Common Vulnerability. Um, <laughs> common vulnerability uh, CVEs. Exploits? I, I don't know. Common vulnerability and exploits. And exploits. <laughs> That's right. Ah, I don't know where my brain went. Anyway, so um, if you uh, ever have a chance, there's a community site called fuj.io, and you can look at all the different... Um, <coughs> Uh, details of the releases. So like Java 19, you'll see releases. Because it was released today, it may not be there. But you would get to see the CVEs for the, um, the various uh, versions of Java. So like, for instance, in this fictional company, you're running in production, there's a release 17.0.3 uh, of Java 17. And say the CVE has a high severity level, uh, having a high score where the uh, attacker can remotely access your infrastructure. So of course your boss would probably ask, you know, so when can you patch this, and when it can, when will it be back online? And um, all the while your users and customers, you know, they don't see or experience any downtime. So how would you answer your boss? Of course, it depends on how you deliver software. Delivery is very important, right? How do you deploy? How do you build? How do you test? And of course, that, that means like if you use manual um, methodologies, in software development life cycles, uh, such as waterfall, or you're doing manual scripts and you're kicking off scripts, or you're FTPing the build to another remote node or something like that. Um, and so, if your team uses CI/CD, which is uh, continuous integration and continuous delivery uh, methodologies, such as uh, automated um, tools, um, you, you're probably in good shape and, and you could probably focus on development. <laughs> I just want to make sure I'm, I'm turned on there. So, uh, so my name is Carl D. I'm from uh, Azul Systems. I'm a developer advocate. Um, to see more about me, there's my QR code. Uh, it goes to fuj.io. I, I blog there a lot. And uh, in the past, I used to be, I still am, <laughs> a JavaFX fan. I don't know if you've heard of it. It's a UI toolkit. Um, I work for Azul. And uh, a quick plug, um, we also sponsored this event for the food and everything. So, you know, buy, buy our stuff. <laughs> awesome. So yeah, we have two uh, JVMs to choose from. Uh, we have something called Azul Platform Core, which is a community build of the OpenJDK. Uh, 
that has option of paid support. It's free, so you can get all the downloads. And in this talk, we'll talk about uh, Zulu, or you know, it's it's just called Zulu, but that's the build off of the OpenJDK. Uh, it's similar to Oracle builds, and so we have a commercial uh, build uh, that is called um, Azul Platform Prime, and that um, contains various components swapped out of the J, uh, Java runtime. So for instance, we have uh, a JIT compiler, it's called Falcon, and it runs much faster, it uses LLVM technology instead of um, Hotspot in the Java runtime. And it has something called uh, Ready Now for uh, fast startups. Uh, usually Java takes a while to start up because it has to warm up or do profiling. And then we have something called uh, CNC. Uh, it's a cloud distributed JIT compiler. Uh, it uses cloud resources. It's called um, uh, uh, Cloud Native Compilation. And um, we have a pauseless garbage collector uh, called C4 where you don't have stop the world garbage collection. It's, it's really powerful. So head on over to azul.com, you know, download them and give them a try. Really awesome. So back to CICD, CICD uh, continuous integration, continuous, continuous delivery. So um, just want to um, show you this uh, graphic uh, from the DevOps world where folks um, are very familiar with this. Uh, I'm sure everyone has seen this at some point in their, in their software career where there's planning, there's coding, there's building, there's testing, releasing, deploying, monitoring, planning, and then it goes all the way around again and again and again. So, but uh, as a developer or software team, you're probably more familiar with this, the, the orange sections where um, you, you, know, you do coding, uh, it's, it goes up in some repository, uh, you know, uh, Git, GitLab or um, GitHub or your own um, in-house. And then uh, the build, test, release, and deploy, it's probably using automated scripts uh, or automated tools. Uh, and so I'm sure most of you guys are, and gals are familiar with these tools. And if you're not using them, you should be using them because they're, they're quite uh, useful. They're like robots that actually just automate all your processes. So all that orange section is done by, you know, it's just automated. You know, you don't have to think about it. So when you check in your code, there's um, events within uh, Git, um, if you use Git. Uh, there's other source repository uh, uh, facilities uh, that also, they have these, uh, they're called events, which relate to you pushing your code or you're uh, creating a pull request. And so there's various events that it listens for, and then when it listens and it says that, hey, a teammate checked in new code, it immediately um, starts to kick off a job. And this job basically does that orange area where it says it builds, it tests, it, it uh, archives and deploys or whatever the, the fourth to the last one is. So there are pros and cons of using these automated tools that people are most used to in the past 10 years, you know, maybe more, uh, such as, uh, you know, Travis CI, and, and I don't have the notes, but uh, Travis CI, I believe, in the past year or two years, they stopped offering the free service of what is called runners. And so runners are uh, basically um, VMs, that run either Linux uh, for um, x86 or um, Macintosh, uh, Mac OS on x86 or the new ARM 64 processors or Windows. So you wanna build your software, you wanna um, run it on a VM, test it, 
and everything, and then you could throw it away, you know, and, and it's very scalable, and you could run these runners um, uh, on their resources. So you're paying them to build your software, basically, or you have it in-house, you could run Jenkins or some of these other tools from um, other companies. So some of the cons are within runners, um, you know, it takes up a lot of resources. You may have a hypervisor that runs and fires up all these different VMs. So the images could be Windows, it could be Mac, it could be, you know, you have to build it to write and run on all these different platforms and all these different versions of the platforms and it's really expensive. And uh, so, you, and you could run out of memory like in Jenkins, uh, it's really vertically scaled. You can't necessarily have it distributed. So you have a job, you create all these jobs to build your software on Jenkins, it, it could literally run out of memory. <laughs> so for instance, if you have a lot of Java projects, here's another thing um, is called caching dependencies, where um, say one project is using Maven and another project is using uh, Gradle and they have transitive dependencies. So they're pulling all these jar files. So this jar file depends on this jar file and this and so on and so on. So it pulls in all this stuff locally just for that project. So you have, if you have a team of different projects and it's pulling and building these different projects, it's pulling all these dependencies when it could cache it in one place and it could actually run f the building and the testing could be running faster and you wouldn't have to pull it all fresh and brand new on a new node on a new operating system you know it's it's very expensive and slow so and then of course the main thing about our imaginary or fictional company uh, we have the use case where we need to swap out the new VM. So the security person in your team says, hey, this is the CVEs, this is the latest release from, if you get paid support from Azul, <laughs> you would get the version that you need, like 7.0.4, and you need to swap it, but you also need to test it and build it and, and such. So uh, the downside of, like, say, Jenkins, you would have to install the different versions of the JDK onto that system in order to, uh, you know, test it against that version. So you're setting up a lot of environment variables and it's just a pain in the butt. So um, everyone knows about GitHub that they are a um, source repository, source, uh, you store your source code and a lot of the projects are open source but you can also pay for enterprise services and have private projects. A company can pay to have their repository there. Um, but also, they have free CICD build services, just like Travis, um, you know, Travis now charges for regular uh, things. Uh, so with, um, with uh, GitHub, it's called GitHub Actions, which is this talk is going to be about. And I want to show you how to actually build a GitHub Action or build a workflow to um, do all that orange section within the DevOps, you know, the, the CI CD uh, pipeline. So we're going to do that. So, yeah, GitHub Actions was created since uh, 2019. <coughs> And so it's wonderful because it's their resources, their images, their um, operating system, their, uh, they also give you like four concurrent or parallel processes. So you can run uh, builds on Windows, Mac, and different versions of Mac on, on uh, different images simultaneously, so they'll build at near the same time, you know, which is really cool. So ideally, if you have this CI, CD and, and such, um, you know, it, you could just focus on code 
and focus on new features and you wouldn't be bogged down by the build, the test, the release and the deploy part, right? If, if this is all automated by some simple mechanism which within GitHub, it's called GitHub Actions, but this thing just allows you to not even think about that anymore. All you have to do is focus on code, check it in, and it just does the stuff for you. You still have to write tests, of course, but uh, it, you know, unless you, you know, have a bug. But speaking of CICD, remember our fictional company and our boss. He awaits an answer. <laughs> he wants you to do this and fix this problem, you know, the use case. So you want to update um, the JVM with zero downtime. And so uh, you want to take the, um, the release, the, 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 uh, the CPU s stands for a critical patch update. So if you get support from a company like us or whomever, whatever uh, JVM vendor, um, yeah, they'll give you, you know, these stream releases that are they're called CPU or critical patch updates. And then they tell you and then you specify it in the CICD and boom, it just, it'll go through the whole process. So, so if someone could, um, this is, uh, the demo really quick. I just want you to pull up your phone. That's a safe QR code, by the way. It's, a, it's not like hacked and it'll redirect or anything. So if you could just go to that, that is actually this, this talk. I have all the workflows for everything that I'm going to talk about. So I know the boss is, you know, yelling at me right now and he wants this thing patched up and ready no downtime to the customers and the users. So, um, where's Glenn? Oh, there he is. <laughs> I, I had a slide in here on spring, but um, did, did everybody get this real quick? Did everybody get this real quick? It, just pull it up because um, it, you're gonna uh, need it in a minute. Just to see the demo, you could see it on your phone or your tablet or whatever. So yeah, I had the slide with uh, Spring Boot um, actually building the demo of this, you know, fictional, uh, you know, application. But anyhow, I built it using Micronaut. And Micronaut has this, uh, it's very similar to Spring Boot. You just go to that URL and you can start building it. I chose Gradle. I, I, you don't have to, you could use Maven, but I chose Gradle. You click generate and it gives you a zip file of the project. It'll have um, the Swagger API. It allows you to, uh, it, the, it documents it. It creates a, a quick demo. It creates a REST endpoint for you and uh, it'll create even the Swagger API, which I'm gonna show you in a minute. Uh, so once you select those, Four boxes, boom, you click that. It'll even create a simple JUnit test for you in a zip file. You expand it, your project is ready to go. So the, you have a Gradle script, um, Gradle W, or if you wanted a Maven, you get a Maven W. So this is, looks like Spring Boot. You know, you create a REST endpoint, simple. You create a controller, uh, the endpoint, it just outputs text. But this is really important. Right there, when you call this uh, URL, it gets the, you know, the fundamental Java property called java.version, right? So I just wanna demonstrate when we hit this uh, URL, it's going to show you the version. It's gonna say 17.03. So, let me make sure. Oh no, okay, that's not bad. I think I know what to do. I think I know what to do. So, real quick, I'm in the project. If you get clone that URL, um, I do a Docker PS, 
And I have the application running. I'll show you that in a minute, but it, that's not the important thing. It's, I'm just showing you that it says five hours ago, right? And I have this other Docker container. It's called Watchtower, which I'll explain in a minute. But uh, the whole CICD pipeline, when it goes, uh, when you actually deploy, it'll go to Docker Hub and it'll detect that change and it'll pull down the new changes and uh, bounce it with the new image of the new container. So it'll deploy and do all this automatically for you. So Watchtower is basically just checking for changes. Checking, is there a change? And so I just wanted to show you that because there's this uh, hash number that is, it'll be different once it changes. So, um, really quick, okay. So when you get that, um, you create that Micronaut application, it's a microservice, it's very similar to Spring Boot. Um, you run this jar file and it listens on a port and it happens to be, I think, port 8080. Um, it, gener it creates a, a Swagger uh, API for you. Um, so if you're building an endpoint uh, and you can, um, let's see, I wanna hit refresh. Okay. Okay, and you hit try it out. I'm sure most people have seen this. So anyway, the important thing of where that code gets that Java property, I just want you to show you once the CI CD actually works, it, you notice it says 17.04. So when the CID, CI CD pipeline actually happens, when you make a change, checks it in, does the test build and whatnot, it will deploy, and then when we hit the send point, it's gonna say 17.04. So I just wanna just let you know about that. So that QR code, it, um, let me make sure. I have no idea why that popped up. <laughs> Hope I didn't show any family pictures I shouldn't have showed. <laughs> Anyway, um, real quick, I just want to show you what I'm going to change. I'm going to talk about workflows in a minute, but this is a workflow. It's a YAML file from GitHub. When, when you create a workflow or a CI CD pipeline, it's an instance of a, a, it holds jobs, and one of the jobs is called deploy. And I'll explain that in a minute, but I just wanted to show you that um, at the bottom, uh, the attribute, there's a thing called matrix or strategy, and within that, you can actually create a lookup table. And in that lookup table, I just, you can call it anything you want, but it's just called Java here. It could have been called Java version, but here it's an array, and uh, it's an array of one element, and it's, it's currently at 17.03. And so this is the current version that's in production uh, that you saw running. And, and so, and this is the image um, when, when I show you what you can do with GitHub Actions in actually deploying a, a particular type of Java, um, I guess, how should I say, um, uh, when you set up, it's called set up Java within GitHub Actions. I'll explain that in a minute, but you can actually get a thin version of the Java runtime. When you deploy, you just want it headless, like you don't want any of the uh, graphical user libraries, and you just want the JRE. You don't want the JDK, you don't want all the development stuff. So it's very thin image of Java, but it's still within the 17.03, but this is a particular version. Um, so what we're gonna do is we're going to just simply change that to 17.04 and the latest, you know, with the security patch uh, for 17.04 and the, just the runtime and it's headless. 
Uh, so that's called the deploy version, and then you build and test off of the, the, the version that you see above. So again, I showed you this QR code. We're gonna go to that QR code now, and uh, if you can, if you're there on your phone, uh, click on the Actions tab, and uh, you can watch this actually being performed. Uh, if I can do it. Um, so, so don't worry about what I'm doing yet. Okay, so this is the deploy workflow, and uh, and oh my word, where am I? Okay. So, like I said, actually, that's why I can't see. I got old man eyes. Okay, and all I'm gonna do is commit these changes. So I commented out the uh, old version. Security team said, hey, here are the patch release uh, for the security vulnerability. Go ahead and uh, use this version, 17.04. Okay, so you're in the actions tab you should be seeing a whole bunch of, oh, it's not happening. The runners have to kick off at some point. Yeah, there they go. I don't know why they're taking a while, but it's interesting. Just want to show you real quick. I mean, the tutorial later, we're going to show you how to do a workflow. It's like 20 lines of code, maybe less of YAML. YAML. So, so there's a green. So th this goes through actually um, running various GitHub actions. One, to um, check out your code. So there's a GitHub action that checks out your code. And then here it sets up using Ubuntu as a runner. And then it, it actually takes Java 19. Um, uh, early access release, and it builds it, and then it deploys it. Actually, yeah. So, so you can just look at what's being done because there's so many different workflows, um, which I'll talk about in a minute. So, here are the list of the different ones that I'm going to talk about in the slides. So you can watch it, you can start clicking around and watching it, what it's actually doing. And while that's doing that, when it's completely done in all green, um, actually one of those workflows is going to deploy, um, it's gonna you know, use the watchtower and automatically deploy. Um, and then we'll hit that rest endpoint again and get that Java property and we'll see 17.04 that it did it automatically in one shot. So, so yeah, see if you can click on action, look at the workflows on the left while I'm talking. <laughs> so here is the architecture and again, I just wanna reiterate uh, so you got Watchtower, it's a Docker container, it detects change at Docker Hub. Um, I made that change in that workflow you saw with the correct build. It then, um, it has uh, various script, uh, some, there is an action for that, but I, I just handed it, it was so short. It actually would uh, um, deploy to Docker Hub. And then it detects a change, uh, it pushes to Docker Hub, detects a change, uh, and then it just replaces, it, it downs that uh, container. So if, like in that other uh, window where you saw the hash, code, the hash for that, it said deployed five hours ago. Well, it should say like a few minutes. I don't wanna go in there because I don't wanna break my flow. So 
So when that's done, someone can holler and tell me it's all done. So we can hit that rest endpoint uh, and tell the boss, he, you know, everything's to go. So the, here are the fundamentals. So this is how you create a GitHub action or a workflow. It's really called a workflow. Uh, it's, the, it's a file and you can have many files and they all sit, um, uh, I'll tell you where to how to create them, but what a workflow is, is essentially a CI CD pipeline. It listens for events such as a push event or a pull event, uh, a pull request. So if you're in you know, open source community and you have contributors, you don't want some rogue person you know, trying to do a pull request and he's, I don't know, messing with the repository and you may not trust him. You know, you want that build system to build it, you know, temporarily and just flag it before, you know, so you, you can decide whether to accept the pull request. You know, because sometimes, you know, people deny pull requests. It's like, yeah, that's a neat idea, but I don't really like the behavior or something to that effect. And then there's a workflow dispatch event um, that is just an event that allows you as the repo maintainer to actually go to the actions tab and initiate a, um, a uh, run of a job. Like you wanna just run the job actively without listening for events. Like, uh, like I wanna build it now. Like I wanna deploy now just for whatever reason. Um, yeah, or like say you fixed a bug or you thought you fixed a bug and, a, and it kicks off the job, it found a bug or, or found a problem and it failed. So you gotta run it again. Um, maybe it was a timing issue and, and you, you just wanted to run it again. You, you didn't wanna change any code, you just wanna run it again. And so there's a thing called runners um, those are virtual machines that allow you to have uh, particular versions. Um, you could use like Ubuntu dash latest and it'll get the latest version of, uh, of Ubuntu or whatever that GitHub supports. They have a list of them so you can go on there. Uh, it, it's called runs on. And then um, each runner, um, it, or each job will have steps. So the, those two, you see runner one, runner two, they're actually running a job. And that job has steps. And the two kinds of steps that you can do is run scripts or GitHub Actions. Those are the only two things that you can do. But it's great because like scripts, you can run bash commands. You can do anything. You can, you know, um, and, which I'll show you just simple echo, you know, or run another script. Um, but the, you know, the main important thing is, it's really great is GitHub Actions and we'll talk about the marketplace in a minute. So, so when you click on action, say you create a project onto GitHub, the first thing you're gonna see, or when you click on action, because you haven't created an action, you, there is no workflow files that exist. They'll give you these options to look at the marketplace, and there's pre-existing GitHub actions. I, I believe Gradle has one, Maven, uh, well, um, I'm sorry, not Gradle. Um, there's various companies like Microsoft or other companies have their own uh, things in the marketplace. Uh, so like these are the typical ones that they offer to show you immediately and when you click on them, they'll um, give you a pre-generated template for your workflow. So it'll have like common events to listen for, uh, push and pull request. And so and it'll have the standard uh, setup, which I'll get into it. 
But then here is, uh, I, I just want to show you how to manually do it. So you select that instead of using one of the marketplace uh, options. So it has to, like your home direct or the main workspace directory, you know, the top level directory is your project, right? So you can have, usually people have POM files or, or Gradle files there and they build the project and such. And they have the, like, they have the source directory and or target and, and it builds everything. But here, um, this is GitHub specific. There's a directory, it's probably hidden if you're in Linux world, it's .github slash workflows. That's, that's well known. And any files that are YAML files that follow the workflow, you know, the specification, they're workflows. You can't have any other files in there. So if you had a readme, I think it, it's fine, but the idea is here you have multiple workflow files. And those workflow files have, um, they have the on attribute. That's a key word and it's a, no, it's a key word. Like some things, it's hard in YAML to know what is a key word and what is something that you wrote uh, you know, a user-defined attribute. So that on is a very important. So that listens to the events, and the events that you want to listen for here, the, the common ones are, um, you know, push, uh, pull request, and uh, workflow dispatch. Remember, workflow dispatch allows you to run a uh, workflow, um, you know, manually or activate it. So first, uh, after you named, um, after you've named it and you're listening to events, um, you have another keyword, it's called jobs. So a workflow has one to many jobs. So here that build is not a keyword. That's something that you wrote. So you can call that hello world if you want. But that is your job. That's one job. One job is to build, you know. Um, it's arbitrary. Uh, so the next key word within that, uh, within build, within that job is runs on. That's, that's a well-known. Um, but n you notice you only see one, one instance so um, you're probably wondering, well, how do you run multiple, multiple things that we talked about earlier? It's simple, you just write an array in YAML and you specify the uh, operating systems that you choose to run on, which is basically, they're called runners. And so um, how do you create a lookup? This is really important. And if you look at examples all over GitHub, they use this, it's called, um, this is a keyword within GitHub Actions, it's called strategy. And strategy uh, provides all these additional options, uh, which I'll explain in a minute. But then also, you, that matrix thing, uh, I'll explain in a minute. Uh, see the keyword runs on. See the keyword strategy. Underneath it, that matrix is not a keyword. That's something I made up, or anybody can make up, but most of the examples, they'll say matrix. It's really just a lookup, but you can nest it. So that OS, I made it up. So I could call it hello world, and then nest it even further. So you can have nested objects, and, and I'll explain. So see the runs on? I know it's uh, defined after the fact, but YAML is loaded like that where, you know, it's loaded in memory and then it'll substitute the value in there. So see where it says matrix.os within the curly braces? Um, that says, um, like if you look at the workflow, you got jobs. Jobs has one to many. Right now we only have one and it's called build. And that build will create three runners and run that job that called build 
three times because three instances on different operating systems. So this, so this is one job that runs on three different operating systems, if that makes any sense. So it's really run, being run three times. And, and it's using this idea of a lookup. So you can nest it, but here I just called it matrix.os. Later I'm gonna say matrix.jdk version. Um, so, so here I wanted to show you uh, strat, uh, other options that are keywords that is part of uh, GitHub Actions workflows. It's uh, within the strategy object. The, so the, the keyword is strategy, uh, matrix is not, OS is not, Java release version is not, fail fast is a keyword. Uh, it's either false or true. If you go to the GitHub Actions documentation, they'll tell you the available options. These are the most common options within the strategy uh, object. So fail fast means that uh, if a job fails, you know, we said in the prior example, there's three, right? One on Ubuntu, one on Linux, one on Linux, one on Mac, and one on Windows. If one of them fails, then they all fail. So that's, that would be fail fast true. Um, if you have false, I want it to run it on all three of the operating systems. I don't care if it fails, I just want it to build. If one builds successfully, I know, and uh, we'll work on this operating system at some other time. Uh, Max Parallel is really awesome. It can run, the, th the um, like GitHub Actions allows you free, the free version. If you don't have Enterprise, they allow you up to four uh, free runners to run simultaneously, which is really cool. Because if you had to build your software on, you know, four different processors like ARM64 or, uh, you know, the new M1 chip and uh, x86 and, and uh, you know, or on Mac operating system and Windows operating system still on x86, but then, you know, you could run four of them and they kind of run at the same time and they're almost done at the same time. You have binaries for all four operating systems near the same time, which is really cool. So um, now we get down to the nitty gritty. <laughs> so this is where you have steps. And the, the very first thing, if you go to GitHub Actions and you go to the marketplace and you select, you know, uh, Maven, I want a Maven workflow. And the very first step they put in in the template is the GitHub action called checkout, uh, version three, the, the at symbol. You wanna follow whatever's the latest because they fix bugs or, what, or whatever. But the idea here is it checks out your code. It's like you're at the command prompt and you're checking out the code from GitHub. So, you know, it's, it's very similar to like Jenkins or, and other CICD tool, automated tools. They have to check out the source code and then build it and compile it and test it and run it and deploy it. So, so just as a summary, um, here's a job. Here's the runs on, that's a keyword. Your steps, that's a keyword. And then um, uh, you can run GitHub Actions and scripts. So the, like the first thing you learned was how to check out code. You use Actions slash checkout. So how do you run scripts? Super simple. Um, you can name it. You can call it whatever you want. So when you run the job, um, it starts outputting, it looks like a terminal window and you start seeing output. It'll say run a one line script. It's, it's kind of nice because, you know, you could actually put that substitution, the dollar sign, curly brace, double curly brace and whatever variables and you could substitute it per run, which I'll show you in a minute. So then how do you run like multiple script statements? Uh, use the pipe symbol. And then you could say, you know, echo this line, run this bash command, run, you know, run Maven, you know, install, uh, clean install. That's a joke. 
So remember one of the awesome benefits of uh, CI, CD, um, the thing with GitHub Actions is this idea of setting up your JDK. So you're, you're using their resources. You're not having to install a version um, on Jenkins and trying to build. It's like, I, I got the binary. I downloaded this somewhere, right? Then you have to install it. You have to put it on that node. It's like, but GitHub Actions will pull from a repository and get the version you want just by specifying the version. And it just pulls it down, sets up your Java home. Everything is just set up. And you can say Java C or you know anything. It's, it's that easy. So um, there are three different versions that I'm going to talk about. So the very first version is from GitHub Actions. Uh, this is the original version. It's called version one, set up Java. And set up Java, uh, they coordinated with Azul uh, because our company supports even Java 6. So we have Java 6, Java 7, Java 8, Java you know, 9, you know, all the way up to 19 EA, even 20 uh, EA or releases. But but I don't think it's supported in GitHub Actions, not, not 20. <laughs> but uh, anyway, um, so in that uh, part, remember it said actions slash checkout version three. Well, you would, you would create another step, and in that step, you would set up your, um, your Java, and you would use this, and I'll show you the attributes. So we learned about runs on, we created a, uh, a matrix lookup, and here we say Java and, or OS, and so this job is gonna run it on three different runners. Okay, keep that in mind. So now we have four, what, one, two, three, four, five different um, Java versions. So, so this setup, is going to, I just want to show you what the lookup table looks like. So it's, so this job is going to run, you know, whatever five times three is. So it's going to run this job that many times. Fail fast is false, max parallel is four, so it might pick up some speed because it'll, it'll do four of the, you know, whatever, you know, maybe there's four Ubuntu Ubuntu's and with you know version eight, version eleven, version seventeen, you know. So really quick, um, so here is version one. They coordinated with uh, Azul and it uses uh, Zulu as a distribution. This is really important. And so here you say um, uses. It's well, one of the steps. It uses uh, checkout, which is what we learned earlier. And the next thing is you, it's a, basically a label. You're telling the, uh, the next step is you're gonna set up Java. So you're using the GitHub Actions I just told you about. It's set up Java at V1. Um, <clears throat> and then there's a with attribute, that is a keyword then this is a keyword too, Java dash version, Java dash package. So if you go to, you know, set up Java v1, it'll tell you what are, what things are available. So packages like you could uh, set up the JDK, um, it could have, it could include Java FX as a package. Some, some JDKs don't need it or just the Java runtime. Say you want to run some quick test and you just care about the Java runtime. You don't want the whole you know, development kit. You could have the JRE with uh, FX and there's other packages uh, that are available that ha how you want to set up Java essentially. So, so what are the benefits? Uh, the version one supports all the versions since uh, Java 6 supports earlier releases uh, like, you know, EA, like 
before a few days ago, not today, but it was like 19 EA. You can get the latest of 19 whatever build of Java 19. Uh, so packages, you can have different packages. I explained that. Um, um, I'm sorry, what was that last one? All LTS releases. That's, that's pretty important too. So, to, so when you go to the marketplace and you hit like Maven YAML or the, the ones that they have, they'll produce a template. And the one that they produce, it used to be set up Java at version two, um, where it only support, it supported additional vendors other than Zulu, other than Azul. And so it, it, there was uh, um, Tamarin from Adoptium. Um, uh, and then uh, Liberica, uh, uh, Bellsoft. Um, and then, uh, yeah, and then version three came out. Microsoft has a build that's based off of Tamarin, and then you have Amazon's Java JDK, which is called Coretto. So you can actually pull these vendors with V3. So V1 and V2, Three or her and V2 are very similar. They just support more vendors. Pretty simple. So V3, again, we use the matrix lookup. The matrix is a user-defined uh, nested object, kind of. I just made it one level deep. It says matrix.java version. And we saw before it was like five different versions of Java. Java 8, Java 11, Java 17. And those were those will be substituted and so that job will run uh, based on that array. And here's an example using Maven. And you're specifying the POM file, and it actually you know, builds tests, builds the jar file and such. So that's really important. So yeah, v3 supports all these vendors, um, even the old adopt um, and open JDK, uh, open J9 implementations. <clears throat> so this is what um, probably forgot to, it probably didn't look in the audience if anybody saw all green by now. <laughs> is it all green? Awesome, awesome. Yeah, I'll show you after this slide. So this is what it should look like um, here. You know, it just shows that. So now, <laughs> this is a great thing. My colleague, uh, uh, Garrett Grunwald, um, Grunwald uh, from Azul, he, cr he created this uh, thing called the Discovery API or Disco API. So it's a GitHub action derived from Setup Java, but it allows you to pull any vendor, <laughs> like any vendor. Like uh, there's, I didn't even know like SAP had their own Java runtime. Like they were building their own off of the OpenJDK. And you know they have their monitoring uh, or tweaks built into their version for whatever reason. Maybe maybe there's things that they can unlock. I'm not sure. Um, and so so that one is the same. Um, I don't know why I put this here, but anyway, there there is one thing I didn't mention. Uh, so notice that cache. Um, so when you're using these setup Java GitHub actions, and these are the keywords uses, and then you put the GitHub action, and then the with, and then those are keywords too, Java ver dash version, distribution. So distribution is very, really important in Disco. Um, and I'm not sure if I showed you in V3, but uh, yeah, V3 is, is also, um, yeah, I think I did not explain that. Okay, yeah, so there's an attribute that's called distribution. Distribution is when you specify, you know, Tamarin builds or, or you know, the various ones that are supported on the left. It says keyword, you, you type Liberica and you'll get their build. Um, and people say, you know, it, it is true that they're very much, they're all derived from the OpenJDK, and most of them are TCK tested. So they're kind of like the same, right? They kind of are. They basically are. 
but some of them are different in terms of like some of them don't come with Java FX or some of them don't come with, you know, uh, or they may not have a version for uh, maybe JDK 15 for whatever reason um, because it's not an LTS. So, so remember that distribution. But then also I wanted to mention cache, which is kind of nice because set up Java, they have that cache attribute. So about the uh, transitive dependencies when you're using Maven or you're using Gradle, those jar files could be very expensive when you're running it on a runner. You're pulling it down constantly. But if it's cached, it doesn't have to pull it down from Maven Central. So you could use that. So the, this is Disco. You can specify, there's tons of, um, um, tons of vendors there. So this is a really good GitHub action. It's from Oracle. Um, so Oracle has, you know, they just released Java 19. Java 19 has a lot of uh, incubator modules and preview uh, release features that are available now, such as uh, like Project Loom uh, using virtual threads and, and uh, it's a lightweight way of using threads. You could spawn off like 10 million threads. It's, it's pretty amazing and uh, it's, it's really neat, you know. Uh, and so the, there's Project Panama, which is uh, how to use um, uh, pure Java code to talk to native libraries, which is really amazing. And then Project Valhalla, um, uh, which is uh, another project I won't go into. So, so this guy, um, again, uses is a keyword, then you use that GitHub action called Oracle-Actions. And, and this is a really neat way to get early access releases of like 19 and you can get 20. You can get uh, you know JDK 20 and play with what they're doing now. Uh, you could play with uh, Loom um, and play with Project Panama and get the latest and greatest. So there's the WIF, there's the website, it's where it's pulling it from because that's, if you go there, you'll actually, there's a page, it'll show you the builds that you can actually download when they build them. So you don't have to build them. But if you're wanting to contribute back into the community or you wanna contribute back into the OpenJDK and you wanna play around with the APIs and, and say, hey, you know, <laughs> uh, you wanna contribute. And so uh, release, we saw the matrix to look up. Um, you know, you could specify 19 or Loom. Um, I think I showed you that. Yeah, here it is. So here's the uh, uh, strategy, that's a keyword. Matrix is not a keyword, it's a user-defined object and it's nested, there's OS, we know what that is. And then uh, a user-defined, another one, it's called java-release-version and it's, those are uh, ones that are defined in uh, the JDK.net. And so, so again, just wanted to show you what uh, Disco um, looks like. So we're, we're coming to a close here. Um, <clears throat> so in closing, you learn about manual processes uh, and that, that could lead to a bad day. <laughs> With your newfound knowledge of GitHub Actions, uh, now you're able to easily uh, deploy and, and hopefully you can be uh, you know, at ease and, and focus on code. Um, so what kind of developer do you want to be? <laughs> um, this, this is the end, but I, I forgot to show you uh, the, the deploy um, really quick. And hopefully it worked. I'm sure it worked. Um, oh, let me just do that. So look, it said 30 minutes ago and um, 
Wow, it took that long, huh? Back then. Okay, so go back to here. We go back to the rest endpoint. It gets the Java property. It was at 17. You know, the page is, is swapped or whatever. I didn't have to hit refresh. I don't know why I did that. Um, you could just hit the endpoint. So the, there's the, um, your boss should be happy. It's secure. The, why can't I zoom for you guys? But there you see it. Can you guys see that? Okay, 17.04. We're in a contrast so bad. So there you have it. Um, GitHub Actions. <laughs> um, yeah. So. so there's my Twitter. If anybody has any questions, feel free to ask me. Um, but here are some links you want to go through. If you, you go to GitHub Actions, this is the actual documentation for specifying some of those keywords that were hard to kind of distinguish between your defined uh, attributes versus uh, what GitHub Action has as keywords. And so, um, let's see, pre-install tools. Yeah, that's a really cool thing. When you use Setup Java, um, it puts Maven and Gradle for you. Like, so you don't have to deal with, you know, it, it's kind of nice. Uh, if you go to that site, it'll tell you things that they support. So if you're using like Node.js, it, it'll say, oh yeah, well, you could specify the version of Node.js and you'll already have it. And, or you already have Gradle, you already have Maven. So you don't have to deal with, so if you notice in the CICD where the step where I say Gradle build, right? It's like, where did it, I didn't have to install Gradle, I didn't have to do anything. So that's, that's really cool. And so I have this blogged on um, Fuji. If you go over there, look for GitHub Actions. I have like part one through three, I think part one through three or four. So there you have it, GitHub Actions. All right. Uh, The ba the bash script. Yes, the part that we showed the bash. Is there a way to specify what shell you would like bash for? You know, um. You're saying, is there a way to specify PowerShell? Oh yeah, you, the, the problem is, okay, this is a little advanced, but there's a way to exclude things that you don't want it to do. Like it's, there's essentially, there's two ways, but there's a way to exclude things, but there's also a if condition. So you can literally say, if Windows, use PowerShell. Uh, or if not Windows, don't use PowerShell, or whatever the logic may be. But, uh, or a simple way is write another job. Just pull that out of the matrix lookup. Just do Windows on another YAML file, purely meant for Windows. You know, so it'll do that. All right, any more questions? All right, thank you, Mr. Carl. Big round of applause. Thank you. Thank you.